Hello everyone, I am glad to welcome you into today's word. It's going to be on time for many of you and I'm going to tell you that this message is going to be a little different than a lot of the messages that go forth on this channel, but it's going to be incredibly rich. It's going to be on time, potent and powerful because as always, we're going to be diving deep into what the word of God says concerning the matter because I believe that the word of God can teach us better than anything that we could ever acquire within the earth, right? Like better than any book we could ever buy because this is the only book that matters, the Holy Bible, right? Better than any podcast we can listen to, any other person that we lean on for wisdom, the word of God is actually one of the most potent and powerful things you can go to as a resource for a life guide, right? Like a life guide to live your life by. And I believe along with many others who are Christian and we let the Lord be our savior and our Lord, that it is a literal life guide, that this is why it was made and this is why it was left here for us. And this is why it is only 66 books. And I'm going to say a prayer and get into the word of God. But first, I want to share with you all something, a little side note about that, because there are many people who talk about all of the missing books of the Bible. And are they are there missing books of the Bible? Absolutely. And the reason why I'm going to go a little bit in detail, because I believe that this needs to be said because I hear this all the time. And I know the deeper we dive into the word of God, there are going to be some people who bring this up. So are there missing books of the Bible? Absolutely. We can see different books referenced throughout the 66 books that clearly are not in the Bible. The perfect example is the book of Enoch. Clearly Enoch is referenced throughout Genesis, but we don't have majority of his story. And there's a whole book outside of the Bible where we can get context, more context in his story. But however, what the point that I'm getting at here is that we only have 66 books. Why is that? Why do we only have 66 books in our Bible and it's considered the Holy Bible, not those other books that were not included? It's because the 66 books that we have in our Bible is what's relevant and necessary for us to know Jesus Christ. Those other books are, are they important? Absolutely. Is there important information in there that's good to know? Absolutely. But they don't lead up to the knowing of Jesus Christ. They don't lead up to the New Testament. They don't lead up to the gospel, which is ultimately going to save your soul from eternal damnation. And so what we have packed in the Holy Bible, which is the 66 books of the Bible, is everything that you need to live life more abundantly here in the land of the living, because you shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, but also so that you may receive salvation and go into deep relationship and fellowship with God. And so you could say that to anyone who comes to you, because I've heard this a lot. What about, what about this book is not in the Bible? Well, how about this? How about you read the 66 books that are in the Bible before you start talking about other books that are not included in the Bible? Have you read the Bible yet? Have you read the 66 books that are in the Bible before you start trying to read stuff that's not even in, in it? That's a whole thing. I'm not going to go into that, but I know that people throw that around and so I'm saying you could just tell them that, that this is what's relevant for your walk with the Lord leading up to knowing Jesus Christ and salvation. So anyway, we're going to get deep into the word of God today. I'm going to say a prayer and make it into the message and I believe that it's, it's going to be life changing. I encourage you as well to get pen and paper because you're going to write down script, you're going to want to write down scriptures and you're going to want to study them in your own time. I thank you, Lord, for sending your children to this message. I know every time, every time you lead me to release something to your people that it is on time for them. It is in season for them, wherever they are in their life, whatever season they're in in their life. It is right on time. That's how your spirit works, God. You move within their life. You open up their minds and their hearts. And I could be saying one thing, it goes into the ears of a hundred people, of thousands of people, God, and it means something different for each of them. And that is because you are ministering to them. I ask that you let that be the case today. For those who you sent to this message, I ask that you send every single person who needs to hear the word today to this message. And as I said, open up their minds, open up their hearts so that it penetrates, they're able to receive 
let your spirit move across the pages when they go to your word and the secret place with you to study these scriptures out let your spirit speak to them and minister to them so that it takes on a deeper meaning it's not just words on a paper but that it makes sense it comes alive to them and then when it comes alive to them as we are reading the word today as we're breaking it down today let it become alive to them and then be made manifest in their life that's what your word does it comes alive to us as we chew it, we eat on it, we make it our daily bread, and then it is made manifest in their life. Let this be the case for them. I lower myself, as I always say, in humility, Lord, and I ask that you be lifted up today, Lord God. We lift your name high. I can do nothing without you. I am nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. We are nothing without you. And so I ask for you to show up today, mighty in their lives and speak today as we're all listening and ready to receive from you. Pour out fresh anointing, fresh oil into their life, into the situations that are causing them to be in distress, whatever it is laying heavy on them. Pour out fresh anointing on that because the anointing breaks yokes. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing now and all that you will do. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, as I said, we're going to be going deep into the word of God today. And I'm glad that you're listening to this because, as I said, this message is going to be a little different, a little different than um, many of the other ones because we're going to be going through some powerhouse scriptures for financial breakthrough. And the reason why I'm glad you're here is because I'm going to tell you, I wish I had these. I wish I had these. I wish somebody ran these through to me. And I wish I had spent time studying them and meditating on the word of God, specifically these scriptures, many years ago. And if I would have had these scriptures, studied them, and really deeply understood the meaning of them years ago, then I would be a lot further now. But I give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor. I'm going to also tell you that um, the Lord will always redeem the time. Not only will he redeem the time, but he'll make sure that everything is working out for your good. You know, if you're listening to the message that I said, uh, that I spoke to you all, I believe it was yesterday I mentioned this, where I was sharing how the enemy loves to get you stuck in this mindset of shame and guilt of all the things that you have lost, right? Because I was talking about uh, sevenfold of what the enemy's soul being returned back to you. Yes, that was the message from yesterday. But the enemy, he likes to get people, especially God's people, right? God's children stuck in this mindset of, oh, I spent all those years in that toxic relationship, or I spent all this money on that and that went nowhere, or this person stole this from me. But I'm going to tell you that God will cause all of those things that you count as loss to be worked out for your good. This is why you count it all joy. This is why you count it all joy because the God that we serve will take all of those things, all of those experiences and compound them to where now you are a person walking in wisdom. You know, that's what, that's what wisdom is, right? It's, it's something that's, I want to use, what's the right word? It's something that's extracted from life experiences and observations and course corrected paths that you've had. All of those things, life experiences, observations, meaning you don't even have to have experienced it, but you could have just observed it in someone else's life and grabbed the, extracted the wisdom from it. Times you've course corrected, that produces wisdom in a person. Do you know that's where wisdom comes from, right? And of course, ultimately, it's the spirit of God that's moving through all of these encounters, right? You didn't just land upon this video by accident or not by chance. It was the spirit of God who put it in front of you and now you're listening to it. And so because you're observing the word of God being taught, you're, you're going to be able to extract wisdom from that. Do you see how it works, right? It's the spirit of God that weaves all of these things together, experiences, observ observances, course corrected paths in your life as this beautiful masterpiece that is the book of your life. Let me know if that makes sense. And so we're going to be talking about today quite a few. I'm looking at how many I have. I have quite a few powerhouse, how, powerhouse scriptures for financial breakthrough. And I know, and I say this by the Spirit of God, this is going to bless you because I can look back over my life and see, wow, if I really 
got into my word and I knew these scriptures, I could stand on them, meditate on them, go deeper into the word of God, allow the spirit of God to reveal it to me in a new way. And my life would never have been the same back then. But hey, my life is never the same now because now I know the word of God. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. It comes alive to you and then it's made manifest. And so we're going to be talking about quite a few. And so for those of you who like to write them down, I encourage you to. And I'm just going to be very transparent with you. These are scriptures that I had written down because I like to keep, I'm just sharing this with you so that maybe those of you who want to do something similar for your prayer time, you could take this practice for yourself. I like to keep a, um, what's the right word to say? I like to keep a tally or like a run through, I'm not sure how to phrase it, of scriptures for very specific things. So if I am having a health issue, maybe I've come down with something, maybe I have, maybe I'm dealing with something health wise, right? It doesn't have to be physical, it can be mental too. Well, I like to keep a, a pack of, I don't even know what, how to call it, right? But like a certain amount of scriptures for that specific thing, for health, right? For sickness. Same thing for finances. If I am believing in God for increase, because you know, those of you who are under the ministry, you know that we're constantly increasing. You can never be in God and just stay stagnant. And so there are many things that we're believing in God for when it comes to this ministry, when it comes to my personal life, my family. And so I keep, I'm talking about financially, I keep, you know, written down very specific scriptures. It's a pack of them concerning financial breakthrough. And then if I'm believing in God for increase and I say, look, Lord, I don't know how you're going to bring this to pass. I don't know how we're going to come up with blah, 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 X, Y, Z, whether that be for the ministry, whether that be for personal life, I go to the word of God. And some of you need to write that, that down. Whenever you have a need, go to the word of God. There's a scripture in there. God has already taught on this. He's already showed you the way on this. Um, and so I keep a running list of scriptures, same thing for relationships. When there are things going on within family, family life, I go to the word of God, where has this occurred in scripture? What does God have to say about it? And so today we're going to learn what God has to say about financial breakthrough. And I'm going to leave you with quite a few scriptures. So some of them are very popular. Um, I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter four. These are all be from the ESV. If I read them from another version, I'll let you know. We're going to start off at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 through 9. And I believe that as you pray the scriptures over your life, specifically these scriptures concerning financial breakthrough, you're going to see something breakthrough in your life. And you're going to know that it was by the power of the spoken word of God Okay, Proverbs chapter four. I feel like I was I was just there. I don't know why. <clears throat> okay, Proverbs chapter four, verse five through nine. Listen to this. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. It's talking about wisdom, and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Okay, so many of you may be saying, what does this have to do with financial breakthrough? I'm going to break it down to you so you can see so there where it says, if you are somebody who gets wisdom, I'm going to tell you, when you're somebody who has wisdom, riches and honor are with you. Actually, it's drawn to you. It's magnetized to you. People will come to you and they will honor you. People will be moved to give into your wisdom. Not only that, let's just say people aren't moved to give unto you. Just because you are a wise person, God will bless the work of your hands because you're doing work for his kingdom. And it's good work, right? There's no illegal activity. There's no, um, there's no false dealings. It's good work. Somebody who's wise knows how to do work with their hands. And it's creative work, right? Because you were made in the image of God. 
and the Lord will bless the work of your hands. You're not just sitting idle minded. Your hands aren't idle. You're not just sitting idle doing anything. You're wise and you're moving, you're quick on your feet and you're diligent. And so wisdom is the doorway to riches and honor. And it says, this is why you get wisdom, get insight. Do not forget and do not, do not turn away from the words in my mouth. Don't forsake her and she will keep you. There it is. Don't forsake wisdom. Don't disregard making wise decisions. Don't disregard, don't forsake the power of wisdom, which is the spirit of God, by the way, because that's where wisdom comes from. And I'm not talking about worldly wisdom. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. But there it is. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. And so when you become somebody who seeks out wisdom, you know, you go through a storm in life and you don't just let the storm beat you up. You look back on it and you self-reflect and you say, how can I extract wisdom from this? What lesson can I pull from this? How can I do better next time? Then you become somebody who's a force. I mean, you become somebody who the enemy can't just continue trying the same old tricks on you because it doesn't work anymore. Every time he tries it, you go through a storm, you look back, you self-reflect and you extract wisdom from the storm. And then because of that, it says she will keep you. You being wise, you will be kept. Kept by who? The Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is the one who gives wisdom. And it says, love her and she will guard you. Did you know that? That wisdom is a guard. Simply by being wise, it's like a supernatural guard that is put up that will keep things out, but also keep things in. Do you see that? Does that make sense? It'll keep certain things out because you're not just going to go for the okie doke. You're not going to just make naive decisions and be easily led away into deception and destruction. It's a guard, but then it's going to keep things in. This, mean, this means that the things that the Lord gives you, that he entrusts you with, right? Because God, when God gives you a vision and he helps you build it, that's him trusting you with his vision. It's not yours right? It's God's vision that he downloaded into your mind and he's trusting you to partner with him to bring it about within the realm of, of the earth. And so that brings about things that God wants you to steward. And it's different for everybody. But the guard, which is wisdom, keeps those things in. The devil can't just come in and rob you of something that God has given to you. He can't come in and rob you of your peace right? Because wisdom is a guard. You see them coming a mile away and you have wisdom that puts up a guard, keeps things out and keeps things in. And then it says, whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. When you prize wisdom, you make wisdom the principal thing, right? Because wisdom is the principal thing then you will be exalted. There are many people who want to be exalted within the realm of the earth, but they're not wise. They're not wise. And so because of that, there's two things that could happen. I'll put it this way. Because of that, there are people who will be prematurely exalted within the earth. And when that happens, they will crush. They will literally be crushed under the pressure of the assignment because they don't have the character, they don't have the stamina, the spiritual stamina, this, they, won't, they won't have the fortitude or the structure internally within their soul in place to stand the test of time, to withstand the storm. And so there's that person. But then there's the other person who is exalted, but they are wise. And because they are wise, they see the tactics of the devil coming a mile away. They know how to rise above in their authority and they take authority over the situation. Then they have that guard up, right? The devil can't just come in and rob you of your peace. He can't rob you of your sanity, right? He can't rob you of the things that God has given you. And to a person who is wise, God trusts that person with more things because he knows that there's that guard up of wisdom. Let me know if that makes sense. And so verse 9 she will, she as in wisdom, she will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. That's somebody who's operating in regality. That's someone who's operating as a royal priesthood within the earth. You're in your rightful position, right? 
as a royal priesthood, which God has called you to be. You're in a rightful position as a kingdom ambassador. And to that person, the Lord trusts you with a lot more. He trusts you with a lot more resources, right? He trusts you with a lot more people. You have a greater influence because God has trusted you. And that all comes, as it says, from getting wisdom and insight. And so for those of you who may have thought, okay, well, what does that have to do with financial breakthrough? Well, when you become a wise person, there are many things that will be released into your life because you now are operating in wisdom. There are many things that could have been halted. There are many things that could have been canceled. There are many things that you wouldn't have had to possibly suffer through if you just had wisdom in that moment. But the beautiful thing about the Lord, the beautiful thing about the God that we serve is that he works all things for your good. And so the more that you get into the word of God, the more that you make him first in your life and his righteousness then you will become wise because you're getting into the word of God. And then you'll have that guard up, as it says, and the Lord will trust you with more. And not only that, he's going to redeem the time for you. And not only that, because it's been brought to the light, the devil is going to return back sevenfold of what he stole. And not only that, he's going to work it all for your good, as I just said. And so that's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 through 9. And so we're going to go back to... Many of you know this because we just talked about this. I've been speaking about this often, Psalm 112. But we're going to specifically own in on Psalm 112, 3. And the reason I have to continue to share this is because not everyone has heard it. Many of you have, if you've been under this ministry for some time, and you listen to every message, and the Lord sees that. I'm going to tell you, He rewards those who diligently seek Him. But then there are some people who are new here, right? There are some people who are new and they haven't studied the Psalms, but I'm gonna go there because you need to hear it and know what the Word of God says about financial breakthrough. And for those of you who have heard it before, repetition is key. The more that you hear the Word of God, the more that your faith builds, right? Because faith comes by hearing, reading the Word of God. So let's go there. Psalm 112, verse three. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Now, I encourage you to read the entirety of Psalm 112 because it, this whole chapter is a powerhouse chapter. But we're owning in on verse 3. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures in forever. Who is he talking about? Who is this psalm talking about? It's talking about the righteous man or woman of God. The righteous man or woman of God is the person who keeps God's, God's commandments. When you keep God's commandments and you get into his word and you dive deeper into relationship and fellowship with God, you become somebody who wealth and riches are in your house and your righteousness because, of course, you're somebody who's righteous. It endures forever. It endures. People will remember you as somebody who is righteous, right? God will make a good reputation out of your name. I want you to remember Cain and Abel, right? In the account of Cain and Abel, we, we of course know that Cain slew Abel, but then God's still talking about Abel long after he's dead. We know this because if you go all the way back to Hebrews chapter 11, I believe it's Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. I don't want to tell you wrong, so I'm going to go there. God is still talking about Abel. Why is he talking about Abel? Because he was considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord. And so his reputation is held up by God. That's a very powerful thing when you begin to think about it, because you know that some people don't live righteously. They live as what the word of God would consider to be wicked lifestyles and their reputation isn't held, held up by God. God's not speaking about them. But then when you look at somebody like Abel, I'm going to go there. Long after he's gone, all the way in Hebrews chapter 11, we see God still talking about him, saying nothing but good things. Okay. I'm having a fight with the pages. So that's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Yes. Listen to this. This is, very, I mean, it's incredibly powerful when you see it. 
By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, th through which he was commended as righteous. There it is. I'm going to pause here so you can see the connection. Come back with me to Psalm chapter 112, verse 3. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. This is for a person who's righteous. Then when you live that way, your reputation is held up by God. This is how your righteousness endures forever. Do you see it? Abel's righteousness endured forever. So much so, he's not here anymore. Here God is talking about him in Hebrews chapter 11. And it says... He was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. That's righteousness. That's what it means by righteousness enduring forever. Though he died, he, he still speaks. And so that will be for you. And so for those of you who are thinking, okay, well, what does this, what does Psalm 112 verse three have to do with wealth and riches and financial breakthrough? Well, there it is. It's right there in black and white. It says, Wealth and riches are in his house. This is for a man and woman of God who's living according to God's standards of righteousness and holiness. And his righteousness endures forever. And so long after you're not here anymore, long after you're gone, your righteousness will still speak. You will still speak. God will still speak of you in the earth. How do we know that? Okay, well, we're reading the, the Holy Bible. We're reading a literal book that was written by people of God whom God considered righteous and their righteousness is still speaking. And so the same will be for you. Psalm 112, three, and I encourage you to read the entire Psalm 112. It's a powerhouse chapter. I'm not going to go over the whole thing now, but for that person who is living righteously, Yes, wealth and riches in your, is in your home. And so you can use this as a powerhouse scripture for financial breakthrough because you can take it to the Lord. You can bring God in remembrance of his word and say, listen, Lord, I'm living according to Psalm 112, according to your standard of holiness and righteousness. I keep your commandments, God. I put you first, according to Matthew 6:33, And because of this, your good word, your good word, which is living, has said that wealth and riches are in my house. And do you know that the more you stand in this scripture and you meditate on it, you dive deep into the entirety of Psalm 112, God will begin to bring it about in your life. And you have to have, you have to have faith that stand the test of time because your faith will be tested. All faith must be tested. That's what it tells us. And I believe it's James chapter one. All faith will be tested. And so you have to have, let me put it this way. You have to continue to read the word of God because it's going to build your faith. And as you do that, when the test of time comes or it's just a flat out test or it's a storm, you're still standing on the word of God and you're going to see him bring it to pass in your life because it's a promise to you. It's a promise to you and you have to treat it as such. And then I want to take you to, let's go to... Ezekiel chapter 16. This is one of my favorite chapters, by the way. Ezekiel chapter 16. Again, we're talking about powerhouse scriptures for financial breakthrough. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 16, still in the ESV. I want to start from, let's start from verse 4 through 14. Okay, this is lengthy and I'll say this. I encourage you to study this in, in your own time, but I want to go over very briefly what is taking place here so that you know the history and the background of what God is talking about. So we're at a time in the word of God in Hebrews chapter, not Hebrews, Ezekiel chapter 16, where it's talking about how the people of God, which is the church, which is the bride of Christ, has lost their faith in God. They're not strongly following the Lord like how they used to. And so the Lord is not only is he hurt, but he's angry at them falling away. And then he has a word that is sent from the prophet Ezekiel. And so he's speaking and he says, he's speaking on behalf of the Lord. And he says, as for your birth on the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt, nor wrapped in swaddling clothes. 
No, I pitied you. To do any of these things to you out of compassion for you, but you were cast out on the open field. For you were abhorred, which that word means hated, on the day that you were born. So what is it saying here? What is he telling the people of God here? He's saying, listen, there was a time where you were in darkness, where no one had compassion on you. No one cared about you. You were just pretty much left out in the dark to die. And he says, and when I passed by you and saw you wallowing in your blood, I said to you and your blood live. And then he repeats it. And then he says, I made you flourish like a plant in the field. And so he literally brought about Psalm 1-3 in your life where you become somebody who's planted like a tree by the living waters or in the living waters. And then you flourish and you produce fruit in every season that becomes you by the hand of the Lord. And he says, listen, I made you flourish. This is God's doing like a plant in the field. And you grew up and became tall and arrived at full adornment. Then he goes on, I'm going to skip down to verse eight. And he says, when I passed by you again and saw you, behold, you were at the age for love. And this is talking about how Jesus came and he brought us salvation. Then he goes on and, say, and says, and I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I made my vow to you and entered into covenant with you. This is the new covenant. Declares the Lord God and you became mine. And he talks about how he bathed the the bride with water this is of course the washing of the word but i encourage you to read this in your own time and so for those of you who may say okay well, what is this, what does this have to do with power have powerhouse scriptures for a financial breakthrough well if you continue reading it talks about and it gives very specific details very specific de details verse 10 through 14 on exactly what the lord has in mind for you you who are listening to this message when it comes to how you are to live your life, the level you are to live your life on. And I mean, like it's a it's a level that is likened to royalty because that's what you are. That's who you are. It talks about how God sees you. And so if you look at your life and you're reading this and I'm going to go through a few of these scriptures and you're saying, well, that's not me. That's not how I'm living my life. No, but this is what God desires for you. This is what God wants for you. This is what God has desired from you for you from the very beginning. But as it says, this is spoken to the faithless bride. And so when you build your faith, when you get in the word of God and your faith is built, you become somebody who looks like the picture of what God desired for, for, for you from the beginning of time. He says, I clothe you with, this is verse 10. I clothed you with embroidered cloth and shod you with fine leather. I wrapped you in fine linen and covered you with silk. This is the best of the best attire. God doesn't see you. And I need you to, I know this is going to trigger some people. God doesn't see you in rags. He does not see you in rags. He does not see you struggling to feed yourself. That is not how God sees you. And so for some of you, you need to start looking at yourself how God sees you. You need to start seeing yourself how God sees you. You need to change the way that you look at yourself. Because I'm going to tell you, the devil will lie to you. He'll lie to you and tell you that the way that things are, the way that you are, is how it's always going to be. He'll also lie to you and tell you that your value is worth nothing. Well, that's a lie. Because the Word of God is nothing but a huge, beautiful book that talks about the king, the kingdom, and his children. And that's you. That is you. And so it says, and I adjourned you. Well, it's, it's much more than that. It's a lie. But that encompasses the entirety of what the word of God is. And so it says, and I adjourned you with the ornaments and put bracelets on your wrist and a chain on your neck. I put a ring on your nose and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown on your head. This is symbolizing your status in the kingdom. You are royalty. You're not just a common person. You are a child of the king. And then it says, verse 13, thus you were adorned with gold and silver not rags, not rags. <laughs> and your clothing was of fine linen and silk and in broader cloth, and you ate fine flour and honey and oil. Do you know that this is the best, the best, especially in biblical time, even today? And it says you, you grew exceedingly beautiful and advanced to royalty and your renown went forth among the nations because of your beauty. And so I encourage you to study this, but really don't just 
listen to me speak it, but in your time with the Lord, study it out because you'll really begin to see how God sees you. And then when you're, you're, you become somebody who's in a situation where, and you know, I don't even know how you got here, but you're in a situation where you're needing a financial breakthrough. You go into the courts of heaven with the authority that Jesus has given you standing on the word of God, right? And you bring forth, look God, this is what your word says. You can bring forth Ezekiel, the entire chapter 16. This is what your word got. Your word says about me, God, concerning the entire bride of Christ, concerning the church. I'm believing in you for a financial breakthrough. You have said that it is your desire to clothe me with fine leather, to wrap me in silk, that I am adorned with gold and silver. Take this chapter into the courts of heaven. And I'm going to tell you, not only, not only does the blood of God speak for you, but then you have Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, who is the righteous judge. You go into the courts of heaven with praise, worship, repentance, and then bringing the word of God. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing that could ever come into your life that could come up against what the word of God says. It's like a harsh boundary line that the devil can't cross. Because, you know, we actually see this many times throughout scripture. But we see this so clearly in Luke chapter 4, and I encourage you to study it, but we see how literally every time Jesus throws the word of God at Satan, he eventually gives up, by the way, but he keeps trying, and then eventually by the third time, he just leaves. He just leaves, and then Jesus goes into his ministry. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to get you to understand, I say this about the spirit of God, that when you know the word of God concerning your situation, today we're talking about financial breakthrough, so that's financial situation for you, for you specifically today, you can go into the word, grab scriptures where you know God has talked about how it should be, although maybe you don't see it in the natural, take it into the courts of heaven and then watch it happen for you. Watch it happen for you. You're bringing God in remembrance of his word and then he'll dispatch angelic hosts and assignment to help you. He'll speak the word and then it'll be done for you. It works the same way where if you see something in your life that is going in contrary to the will and word of God, then you speak the word of God with authority and faith and then watch it shift back into alignment. I'm going to tell you the only reason the devil gets away with a lot of things is because he's allowed to, because people aren't walking in their rightful position and their authority in Christ Jesus. There are many things in my life where I can look back and I'm saying the devil was allowed to get away with that because I wasn't, I didn't know who I was at the time. I didn't know the power that the Lord had placed within me. I simply did not have a recognition or I simply did not, I wasn't aware of my identity in Christ. And so he only got away with it because he could at the time. But there is a God. There is a God. And so when it's brought to the light, he must return back sevenfold of what he took. And it has come back to me sevenfold. I am still here today to tell a testimony of anything that the devil has stole from me has come back sevenfold, all glory to God. But God will also redeem the time, as I said, and he'll work it out for your good. And so you could stand on Ezekiel 16, verse 14 through, sorry, verse 4 through 14. And then I want to take you to Deuteronomy 28. And as I said, if you've been sitting under this ministry for some time, then many of you know this, right? But then number one, repetition is great. It's going to build your faith. And number two, there are many people who do not. They do not know anything about what the blessing actually is for obedience. Okay, so before I get into Deuteronomy 28, I do want to share something with you all. Because I could read this too, but it's, it's going to sound like, chicken scratch is going to mean absolutely nothing to you if you don't know the precursors. So there are some people who could read this to you or you could read it yourself and you're saying, okay, well, God, I'm not seeing this in my life. You said I should be blessed in the city. I should be blessed in the fields. Blessed is the fruit of my womb, right? You read the word of God, but you don't see it, it happening in your life. Why is that? Why is that the case for you? Why is that the case for some people where you look at some people and you say, well, they're Christian. And they appear to be following God. They appear to be knowledgeable within the things of God. Why aren't they seeing the blessings of God? Well, here it is. It tells us 
that you have to obey the commandments of God. Obey, and it's as simple as that. Obey the commandments of God. And it says, faithfully obey, fully obey the voice of the Lord. And so when you become somebody, I'll say this, when you become somebody who is living according to God's standard of righteousness and holiness, it becomes really, and that's, I'll put it this way, it's, and that's the way, that's the way that you live. It becomes really hard, it becomes really hard to imagine that there are people out there who say they love the Lord, who are very knowledgeable in the things of God, in the word of God, but yet they are refusing to let go of certain idols. They're refusing to let go of certain sin. And truthfully, that disqualifies them from very specific blessings that is outlined to us in the word of God. And so from the outside looking in, we don't see everything, but God sees. And so for those of you who may be thinking, okay, well, this person seems to be living according to the word of God. This person seems to be knowledgeable in the things of God. This person seems to be walking up uprightly in God. Well, God sees everything. And then you could use that to assess yourself. Are you still wanting to hold on to hidden sin? Are you still wanting to hold on to an idol in your heart? Have you truly put God first? Are you truly and faithfully obeying the voice of the Lord? Are you being careful to do all of his commandments? Let's start at verse one, because that's exactly what it says. Deuteronomy 28 verse one. Again, we're talking about powerhouse scriptures for financial breakthrough. This is going to really, once you really grasp this, it's going to unleash something in your life. I'm saying this by the spirit of God. One, number one, also because I've experienced it in my life. And number two, because as we all know, the word of God is a literal book of life and it works. When you work the word, when you read the word, the word works for you. Verse one, and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, being careful to do all of his commandments that I command you today, the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And it keeps repeating it. It's even going to repeat it if you go down to verse 14. And it's repeating it because God says, he tells us, if you love me, you'd keep my commandments. And so that's how we show love to God. I have to put that out there because many people will say, God knows my heart. Well, he does know your heart. He knows if you're following his commandments. And that tells him plain as day, if you love him. Then if you go on to verse two, it says, actually verse three, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of your herds and the young of your flock be. So it's saying that when you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord God, when, you're, when you carefully follow his commandments, you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be, be blessed in the field, the fruit of your womb will be blessed, meaning your children will be blessed. Blessed shall be your basket and your netting bowl. These are things that you use to create with. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. And it continues to talk about what a blessed life actually is. When you really read this and you let it seep in and you meditate on it, you can clearly see how by following the commands of God and faithfully obeying the voice of the Lord that he will bless you and you'll be prosperous. That includes your finances. You'll be financially prosperous. And so for those of you who you're believing in God for financial breakthrough in your life, really assess your life. Are you following the commands of God? Is there hidden sin in your life? Like really be real with yourself. I have a course coming out where I'm going to be talking about this. Is there hidden sin in your life? Is there idolatry in your life? Idol worship doesn't just mean putting up a golden calf or an image. It means there's something within your heart that you hold high above the Lord and his word. Is there something seated on the throne of your heart that is not God? And you have to be real with yourself. When you become this person, not only will you be financially prosperous, not only will the fruit of your womb be prosperous and blessed, but the Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before you. And so you'll have no enemies and they may rise against you, but the Lord will fight on your behalf. God will fight on your behalf. 
there are many times where I can clearly look back over my life and I'm saying, okay, this is where God stood up for me. This is where God came through for me. Didn't have to say a word. Didn't have to do anything. God will fight on your behalf. Then it says the Lord will command the blessing on you and your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And then it says, I'm going to go down to verse 11. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity and the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground within the land the Lord, the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And so what does this mean? And I encourage you to read all of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14, because it talks about how God will bless you, how he desires to, he actually delights in prospering you. What does this mean? This means that if you are in a situation in your life where you are believing in God, as I said, for a financial breakthrough, you can take Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 into the courts of heaven, bring God into remembrance of it, stand on it. And remind God, listen, Lord, this is what your word has said about me and my finances. For those of you who maybe you are believing in God to bring your children to salvation, you're believing in God to give you children. You can stand on this as well. Take it into the courts of heaven and say, Lord, I have faithfully obeyed your voice. I have been careful to do all of your commandments. And this is what your word says concerning someone like myself who lives according to your standard of holiness and righteousness. And here's the thing, if you want the Lord to convict you, if you're somebody who's saying, Lord, I repent of all my sins, bring to light in my mind, if there's anything in my life that I'm doing that is not pleasing to you, the Lord will show it to you. You get back in alignment and right standing with him. And then he'll bring about everything that you need, everything that you need and more. This is bringing about Philippians 4.19. And so I encourage you to read Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. As I said, this is a lot of scripture that we're dropping today, but I believe that for those of you who are hungry and you're ready and you want to go deeper into God, this is for you. This is for you. And then we're going to go to Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. Let's see. These are scriptures that I stand on, that I've been standing on for quite some time. And as I said, when you read the word of God and you work the word, the word works for you. Okay, I'm going to actually start at verse 6. Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. Listen to this. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while... I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, again, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. There's so much to unpack in this these short few scriptures. First, what I want you to understand, and I say this by the Spirit of God, is that when he says, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, what I want you to really Im- like imagine and picture this in your mind is that there is nothing on this earth that can stop you from receiving a financial breakthrough. Absolutely nothing. When God says it's yours, when he says that the floodgates of heaven are open in your life, the floodgates of heaven are open in your life. God will create a way where there's no way. God will carve out paths in the wilderness and create streams in the desert for you, for you. And it doesn't have to be more than one of you. It could just be one person. It could just be you. You could be in what you consider to be the most impossible situation. I don't care what it looks like. God will send someone into the pit, if you're in the pit, to come pull you out, to come give to you, to pour into you. There is nowhere that you are, there's no situation that you're in, there's no, there's no amount of, or there's no level that's too low where God can't come down and pull you out, where God can't speak to you and call you up higher. I need you to understand this because the devil will tell you all kinds of lies. He'll say, well, 
the reason they got this place in life is because they grew up Christian or they had they grew up in a Christian household or they had this or they had that and so God is able to do this for them. Well the well God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. There's no situation that's too hard for God. The devil will lie to you and for many of you the devil has been lying to you. And today is the day where you stop buying it. Today is the day where you stop coming into agreement with it. And so God says, and it says here, thus says the Lord of hosts, he'll shake the heavens and the earth for you and the sea and the dry land. Why is he doing it? Verse seven tells us to make sure that the treasures of all nations shall come in and he will fill your house with glory. Now, I've never heard it explained this way, but I want to explain it to you uh, through personal revelation that the Lord gave me. So this is two things. This means two things. One, it means he's going to fill your house with glory which means your physical temple, because your body is the house, which is the temple of the living God. But then it's your actual house, right? It's your actual place where you live. And if you don't have a house, he will give you a house. He'll give you a place to live. And then he'll fill that place with glory. He'll shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land to be sure that it happens. And there's no person, there's no devil in hell that could ever stop it. And you have to believe that. Why is he able to do this? Well, it tells us in verse eight, he says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And so many people will say that money is back, money is backed up, the money that we have now is backed up by gold and silver. And you have the whole argument where people say, well, it's not backed up by gold and silver anymore. But what I want you to understand <clears throat> is that before there were anything, there was gold and silver. And then money was initially backed up by gold. And so God owns the gold and the silver. And so all money on earth is backed up by God. Do you see that? Do you see it? There's no money that exists on earth that hasn't come from God. And so people can lie. The governments of this world can lie and act like they own the money. The Federal Reserve Bank can lie and act like they own money and control what gets dispersed within the government. But truthfully, before there is any world system in place and any of the governments, there was God who said the silver is mine and the gold is mine. And so what that means is that God backs up all the money and he gets to decide who gets what. And when God says it's time, when God says that he shall fill your house with glory, he's going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. There is nothing that could stop it. Absolutely nothing. And so when you go into the courts of heaven and you remind God and you remind the devil too of Haggai chapter two, verse six through nine, God will remember. Do you know that's what happened with the Hebrew Israelites? Do you know that when they cried out to God, he said, oh yes, I remember my covenant that I made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will come and save them. They put him in remembrance of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then God went and saved them, delivered them from literal, quite literal slavery. We're just in, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I was going to go somewhere else. We're the, literal slavery, literal slavery. There are things that we endure today, but they were in literal slavery and they cried out to God, putting him in remembrance of his word, the covenant that he made. And then he came and delivered them. And so when you go into the courts of heaven, you put God in remembrance of his word and you stand on it. You don't waver. The Lord will bring about something miraculous in your life and it will be with acceleration. It will be with acceleration because God doesn't operate within the limits and the boundaries of space and time. And so I encourage you to write that down. Haggai chapter two, verse six through nine. And I want to take you to one of my favorite scriptures. That's second. Well, they're all my favorite, by the way, but that's second Corinthians chapter nine. You know, I think a lot of Paul's writings are very, um, undervalued but he really shares a lot about how God views money and the financial system that's set up within the kingdom for you for me for the people of God in the books of Corinthians so I'm going to go specifically second Corinthians okay I'm having to war with the with this Bible today okay Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 
And I'm going to be reading verse 9 through 11. This is one of the verses that changed my life, completely changed my life. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of those verses. I've sat in church and heard this taught probably thousands of times. And it didn't click. It didn't click until the spirit of God had moved across the pages and made it relevant to me, made it come alive to me. And when it clicked and when you catch your own personal revelation and you'll see what it is as I read it concerning this verse and you begin to work the word of God, it's going to work for you. Listen to what Paul says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, I'm actually going to start at verse 6 through 11. He says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Everyone must, must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, I'm going to pause there because a lot of people have questions there. And I know this because I actually seen someone say, I can't remember what video it was on, but someone commented and they said, okay, well, how do you know? That's not, they said, that's not true. Paul's not talking about sowing physical things. He's not talking about sowing money, sowing, sowing prayer, sowing anything. But here's the thing. If you go down to verse seven, he talks about giving. So he says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so in order to talk about giving, in order to talk about being a giver, there has to be something that is given. There has to be something that is shown. And so clearly Paul is talking about actually giving something. And so verse eight, it says, and God is, able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. And so I want to break this down to you because I have never heard anyone personally break this down in the detail that you're getting it broken down to you today. So many people talk about second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight, about God being able to make all grace abound towards you so that you have all sufficiency in all things at all times and you may abound in good work. But if you go up to the scriptures before that, Paul talks about sowing. He says, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And he talks about God loving a cheerful giver. But then if you go over to verse eight, it says, and. It says, and. And so it is in a separate sentence where Paul is saying, this is how God is able to make grace abound to you. It says, and. It's meaning when you become a sower, I really want you to see this. It's saying, or Paul is saying, when you become a sower and you make it a point to give what you have decided in your heart, it's not reluctantly, and then God will make all grace abound to you so that you may have all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Do you see how the process flows? When you become somebody who gives, and it's out of your heart, not reluctantly, you don't feel compelled to, then God gives that person grace. And it's not just talking about giving one thing in particular, but it's talking about you give your time, right? You put first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You sow into the kingdom agenda. You give, you pour words of wisdom into other people. You give out of your heart, not out of compulsion. Then if you go on, down, it says he is distributed freely. He is given to the poor. There it is again. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And I'm going to tell you something. This may trigger a lot of people, but there are many people who want God's hand, but they don't want God's heart. And so you have to really begin to assess your life and how you're moving in your relationship with the Lord? Are you somebody who's constantly asking God for a handout, but you're not wanting to do anything for the kingdom of God? Is in you're not wanting to put God's kingdom first. You're not wanting to do as it says in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things, then all those things will be added unto you. And so you can't 
treat God as somebody that's just to there to give you things, but you have to seek God's heart. When you become somebody who's seeking God's heart, then you, then you begin to have a heart like God. And then you become somebody who's more of a giver than a taker. I did a whole message on that. I'm not going to go into that. But it says when you're this person, God will supply seed to the sower because you have a heart of a sower. And because you have the heart of a sower, God's going to make sure you always have something in your hand to give. And it says you will be, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Do you know that when you become a generous person, God will make sure that you have more so that you can be more generous? It's not, it doesn't work the other way around. There are people who will say, well, I can't be generous because I don't have anything to give. Well, you become, you become a generous person first, and then God will make sure that you have something to give. And so you have the heart of a giver first. Okay, I'm not going to drill it in the ground. You get it. I encourage you to study 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 11. And then once you really get this, this is one of the most powerhouse scriptures on financial breakthrough that we will go over today. Once you really get this, it will change your life, completely change your life. And then I want to take you to John chapter 4, 35. We probably won't be able to get through all, all the scriptures today, but I do want to leave you with the most powerful ones concerning financial breakthrough. Okay, John chapter 4, verse 35. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking and he says, do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe for harvest. What does that mean? Because I hear this taught many different ways. What well, means two things? It means that, well, actually, it really just means one thing, but then you could look at it different ways because the scripture is dynamic in that way. But I'll, I'll put it this way. It means that when you sow seed, Jesus is saying, don't say there yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, lift up your eyes. The fields are ripe with harvest. That means that you can always at any time speak the word of God and call forth your harvest. I did a whole message on this, on calling in your harvest. And then when you have a need, it shows up right on time because you've already put seed in the ground and you're consistently doing it. Do you know that the Lord does the same thing with you? The Lord does the same thing with all of his children. He has planted you as a seed within the earth realm. And then he doesn't look on the field and say four months and then they'll be ready. No, he looks out on the field of all the seeds he, that he's planted. And he says, they're all ripe for harvest. They're all ready to be taught the gospel. They're all ready to hear the word of the Lord. If you are a sower, God will make sure that you always have a harvest coming. I'm telling you. When you really begin to stand, I mean, 10 toes down on these scriptures and you study them. And then when you see that something's happening in your life in the area of your finances that do not align with the word of God, you speak it out with authority and faith and watch it come into alignment with God's word concerning your finances. You even take it into the courts of heaven to remind God of his word. And then you'll see things very quickly, by the way, begin to change for you your life will never be the same. So here's what we're gonna do, because I actually had a, quite a few more scriptures to share with you all, but I'm gonna make this a part two, and we'll share the part two tomorrow. And I believe by, and I say this by the Spirit of God, that this is really going to bless many of you. And once you let, let this word penetrate, right? And, and as I said, meditate on it sometimes it's better to hear it in repetition because it builds your faith for some of you you're hearing these scriptures for the first time ever in your life and praise god because i'm telling you that as you study them out meditate on them it's going to change your life so i want to say a prayer for you all here because i believe that the lord has released these scriptures to you that he's wanting to take you to another level financially can you believe that and can you see it for yourself no matter what the devil has told you it is God's desire for you. He delights in prospering you. And so I want to say a prayer because I want to be sure that your heart is in the right place to receive, right? Your heart is in the right place to want to see God's heart, not just his hand, but also that I want to pray that the Lord dispatch 
angelic host on assignment to be sure that it's brought about in your life. And that he places a shield of favor around you. So I ask that you come into agreement with me on this prayer. I thank you, Lord, for sending them to this message and for allowing your spirit to move within them and sending your spirit within the atmosphere of their home, their car, their job, wherever they are at, and pouring out fresh anointing. We know that it is the anointing of God that breaks yokes. There are many things that the devil has sent into their life, into the area of their finances, hoping they never make it out of it. But there is a God. There is a God who delights in prospering us. Not only that, you have given us your word, Lord. You've given us your word to study out and learn the real, the true plan of God for our life. That we are called to be royal priesthoods in the earth realm. We're called to be kingdom ambassadors for your kingdom. We are called to be the head and not the tail, and we are called to live a blessed life of life more abundantly. Anything that is happening within the area of their finances that is bringing about destruction in their life because they can't afford certain things, that's bringing about death in their life because they can't afford certain things concerning their health or things are on the decline because they can't afford to keep it up. If there's anything that is in their life that is going down the path of death, something's being stolen from them or destruction, it is of the devil and we cancel the assignment now as it is operating illegally because light dawns in the darkness for the upright. I thank you, Jesus, that you have covered us. I thank you, Lord, that you're still seated at the right hand of the Father and that you hold all of the power and the authority and that you've delegated it to us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you have the highest name in the land, the name above every other name, and we lift you up high, God. I ask that you place a shield of favor around them. Increase them in wisdom. Let the shield of favor and wisdom be an impenetrable guard and shield that cannot be penetrated by the weapons of the enemy. They shall never prosper. Let it keep things in that you've entrusted them with. Raise them up in wisdom and stature so that they may gain favor with you, God, and then favor with man. We give you all of the honor, the praise, the glory, and the thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I know this message blessed you. I'm going to be doing a part two on this because I had a lot more that I wanted to share with you all, but I believe that it's best broken up into two parts. And so I encourage you to look out for that. For those of you who are wanting prayer, whether that's over your financial situation, what we talked about today, a financial breakthrough, or you want prayer on something else, you can send us a prayer request. There's an option to do that in the description. If you click on the contact link, it will take you to a page to send in your prayer request, or you can send in a testimony. Either way, we love to celebrate with you. We also love to pray the will of God over your situation and we're gonna watch God move because the power of agreement works and it is powerful. And so that option is there for you below. Those of you who the Lord has put on your hearts but seed in the ground, maybe you don't have seed in the ground. Maybe you are somebody like myself and like many others here and in the body of Christ who is a sower, that's who you are. And you wanna make sure that you have consistent seed in the ground so that you're reaping a consistent harvest. That's just how it works, any farmer knows that. And if that's you, there's an option below. There's an option below to sow into the ministry. And then there's many other resources for you there. I do have one thing to say for those of you who are partners of this ministry. If you partner with us at the third level, you can expect an email coming out to or from us to your personal email very soon of a tracking number that we're gonna send you that is detailing the shipment you'll get. We're gonna send you, we put together a cute little gift box for you to honor you as you've honored us. And um, you can look forward to that pretty soon, probably by tomorrow. And for those of you who are partnering with us at either level, know that everybody gets something because we wanna honor you because you've honored us. And so with that being said, Know that we are always praying for you all. I love you all, and I'll talk with you in the next message.